Well, hello. Movie review time. I haven't done one of these for a little while. Uh, Elvis, uh, starring Austin Butler and Tom Hanks, directed by Baz Luhrmann. What's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money, stick around, and you'll find out. Now, I'm uh, 66. Uh, President Kennedy, John Kennedy, uh, was assassinated in 1963. And when I was younger, there was a saying going around that everybody knew what they were doing when they heard that John Kennedy had been shot. But if you're younger than, I don't know, about, about my age, frankly, you don't have a memory of that. So it didn't really mean anything to you, do you? I suppose for uh, uh, the generation after me, uh, I suppose you could say everybody remembers what they were doing when they heard that Freddie Mercury had died, or they thought quite the same thing. And for the current generation, I suppose it'll be you know, everybody will know what they were doing when they heard that the Queen had died. Now, Elvis died in 1977, and I can remember what I was doing when I heard that Elvis had died. I was working in a paint factory by the name of Bestabal. I was working through an agency and uh, came on, on the wireless. I think that's what we called it then. We heard it on the radio and everybody was very upset. Now, again, 1977, do you realise that 1977 was uh, 23, it was 45 years ago. Just ponder that for a moment. Elvis Presley died 45 years ago. So if you are younger than, let's say, 55, you have no memory of uh, Elvis Presley. Okay, you see stuff about him on the, uh, on the movies or on television or you read about him, but you have no understanding of what, what Elvis meant and the impact that he had on uh, popular music. So this is by way of a fairly long preamble into this particular film, which is called Elvis, because it's a biopic of uh, Elvis, Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley is played by Austin Butler, and he also stars Tom Hanks as Colonel Tom Parker. And Colonel Tom Parker was Elvis's manager. He was a very interesting character, or one would suspect, uh, and probably more than suspect, that he was uh, on various shades, or indulged in various shades of illegality. And there is, a, there is an interesting film to be made about Tom Parker, Colonel Parker. There's an interesting film to be made about Elvis Presley. Uh, there's an interesting film to be made about the relationship between those two. But this film is not that film. It is a pretty good uh, biopic of Elvis Presley. And it's what I would describe, I suppose, as visual karaoke. In other words, you have somebody, Austin Powell Butler, I nearly said Austin Powers, uh, who does look quite a lot like Elvis Presley. He does sound quite a lot like Elvis Presley, and he moves in a way that Elvis Presley moved. But, but, whereas in the film Bohemian Rhapsody, you were able, I think, to suspend your disbelief, that great trick of the movies. You could suspend your disbelief for long enough to believe that you were watching Freddie Mercury. You weren't watching somebody playing Freddie Mercury. You could watch the film and you thought, I'm watching Freddie Mercury. When you're watching Elvis, the movie, you just don't, or I, perhaps it's more accurate, did not get that feeling. I never thought for one minute that I was watching anything other than a pretty good Elvis impersonator. I never thought for a minute that I was watching Elvis Presley. And this film, I, I believe, and it, you know, it's, it's a decent enough workaday biopic. It's well made, you know, the dance sequences are good, the, the special effects are good, the the sets are good, the sound is brilliant, the colours really pop. You know, all of that kind of Instagram, um, Snapchat, TikTok. It's like a, like a three-hour TikTok movie with music, and the music is, is mostly Elvis's. It, it's, it's okay, but it doesn't come close to capturing who Elvis was, what Elvis meant and the real explosive atomic bomb impact that he had, to a certain extent, continues to have on popular music. In many respects, not all respects, let's be honest, in many respects, rock and roll begins and ends
scenes uh, with Elvis Presley. Incidentally, there is a scene in the film uh, with Little Richard, or an actor playing Little Richard. I'm sorry, I didn't catch his name. And there, I thought he was incredible. I thought I was watching Little Richard, whereas for the rest of the film, I never thought I was doing anything other than watching somebody play Elvis Presley. Now, there were two fatal, what I think are fatal flaws in this film. Now, one is Tom Hanks. Now, Tom Hanks is a great actor, okay? I don't know what he's doing in this film. Uh, what they've done is really given him these really heavy Nixonian type jowls. Now, unless uh, uh, Tom Hanks put on the best part of Three Stone, most of which were on Winnie's chins uh, for this part, and I don't believe that Tom Hanks is that kind of method actor, then what they've done is through some very clever trickery, they have made him look really quite Nixonian in his jowls. But there is too much Tom Parker, which detracts rather from the Elvis, and the Elvis bit detracts from Tom Parker. So what you get is a bit of both, but not enough of either to really satisfy you. And Tom Hanks, he, he plays it well, and, and for the, the films or the, the pictures that I've seen of Tom Parker, he actually plays quite a close resemblance to Tom Parker with, with these jowls, but he just... It detracts from the film as well, as opposed to what he should do, which is add, add to it. Now, I suppose they did that because they wanted a way into the story of Elvis, and they used it as kind of Tom Parker narrating uh, the, the story of Elvis, and then you, they, they relive certain scenes, of course. And as I'll say again, it's, it's, it's well done, you know, it's, it's okay. But the other fatal flaw and this really is a fatal flaw, is that Austin Butler is not Elvis Presley and he does not sing in the way that Elvis Presley did. Now you might say, and first of all, I suppose I ought to say, then you might say, oh, Julian, you know, you've fallen into one of your traps because all of the singing is actually Elvis. They've done some very clever lip syncing. Now, if that is the case, then I apologize, but I don't think it is. I may be going out on a bit of a limb here, but I think, it's Austin Powers doing uh, Austin Powers. It's Austin Butler doing the singing, and yeah, it's a pretty good impersonation. It's pretty decent karaoke. If you heard him down the pub on a Saturday night or into the pier on Skate Ness, you'd probably chuck a couple of quid in his hat at the end of the show, and even tip him as well. But he's not Elvis Presley, and despite what they did to Tom Hanks's jowls, they don't make Austin Butler. Sufficiently, there, there was Elvis in his last couple of years a, achieved a kind of um, what's the word D decaying grossness, which was really uh, tra tragedic and very sad. And they haven't done that to, to Austin Butler, he puts on a bit of weight, but they don't do that, that drug induced flabby puffiness that Elvis had. And look at look at some pictures, if you can bear to, of Elvis in his last year or, or whatever. And, and Austin Butler does not look like that. The other flaw, uh, I, I think, in the film is that, as you may know, Elvis was married to Priscilla, Priscilla Presley. She obviously became when they got married. And she appears in the film, but she is a purely two-dimensional character. You get no closer to understanding the, the relationship between Elvis and, and Priscilla. She flits in and out in a couple of scenes. So, should you go and see it? Well, the thing is, if you're over 70, you will know, or you will have some understanding and awareness of what Elvis meant. And I kind of think that this film would be a bit of a disappointment. It may not be, you, you may really enjoy it. If you're under 70 and all you know about Elvis is what you've read or maybe seen in, in TV shows or, or something like that, then will this film really show you what Elvis was like? No, no, it won't. If you want to see a, um, 
a, a, a film that shows Elvis in his later years, but before he entered that tragedic decline, then look up uh, Elvis, That's the Way It Is, which was a burnt film made about when he first went back to, to Las Vegas. And that not only captures um, Elvis, Elvis the man and Elvis the singer, it also captures Elvis the musician, a, 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 a oft um, not, not, underplayed element, but it shows you that Elvis was not just a great singer, but Elvis understood music and understood what music could do and could do to people. And he understood what was a great song as well. Um, should you see this from? Well, you know, there's, there's been a glut of them, hasn't there? I, I watched, for some reason, I only watched about half of the Elton John picture, and I, I just didn't think that Taron Egerton was Elton John. I watched Bohemian Rhapsody, and even though I'm not a big fan of Queen, I'm not a big fan of Freddie Mercury, I thought that was a really good film about Freddie Mercury and about, about Queen. Is this film a good film about Elvis? Well, it's all right. So, you know, if you want to spend... 14 quid, go ahead. If you'd want to do something better, I suggest go on Spotify, go down your local vinyl record store and try and get yourself uh, Elvis's album of the Sun Sessions or the, the, the singles that he cut for uh, Sam Phillips' Sun Records. And that will really give you an understanding of what early Elvis could do and if you get the soundtrack to Elvis, that's the way it is. That will give you a real understanding of what the later Elvis could do. Just one of, final coda, I suppose I'd like to say about the film, is the final scene is Elvis in possibly his last performance at uh, Las Vegas. And he sings Unchained Melody. And I, again, am convinced that that is Elvis singing Unchained Melody. It's not Austin Butler playing Elvis. It's not Austin Butler doing the singing. Again, shoot me down in flames if I'm wrong about that. But that shows, even in his last days, on his last dregs, when he could hardly stand and carry his weight on the stage, Elvis Presley could still wipe the floor with any singer, frankly, who's ever lived. So, Elvis Presley, rest in peace. Thanks for watching. See you next time.